Either one, it is currently the 26th of September 2012, and you are looking at this a very intense and violent Typhoon Jellowan. You can see that very clear eye on this infrared slash visible satellite imagery, and that's just indicating the winds coming out of the storm system. Actually, according to the Japan Meteorological Agency, currently winds are upwards of 288 kilometers per hour that's the wind gust pressure is down to 905 hpa that is just shy of being the most powerful typhoon of 2012 and it very well could break that record if it does continue to intensify although it is start expected to start to weaken here through the coming days but if we pull up the track here from the joint typhoon warning center not the trans meteorological agency but the track from the jtwc you can see they actually have this as a Category 5 equivalent of a Hurricane Typhoon here. A very strong Super Typhoon. They're expecting it currently to move off there towards the northwest. And throughout the next 48 hours, start to bend towards the northeast. Moving across the extreme southwestern portions of the Japanese islands. Before moving off towards Okinawa, which is just outside the northern portions of this screen here. But for the time being, it's still bringing some heavy rainfall across the Philippines. And at least Pagasa currently expecting to move off towards the northwest. Actually impacting around Taiwan or extreme northern Luzon. I actually do not quite agree with this track, but it is the official WMO agency for the Philippines, so I do kind of feel obligated to show it. I'm going to show you what some of the model outlooks are for a second and kind of show you why I don't agree with it so much, but uh, currently about 485 kilometers towards the east of Kasiguran, and these are the warnings currently in effect. If you are under any of these areas, basically they're along the east and northeastern coast. You do want to take proper precautions, but not just there. Flooding across much of the country very well could be possible due to that in of moisture coming into the storm system from the South China see pushing across Visayas currently and also those outer rain bands hitting the northeastern portions of Luzon actually seeing upwards of three to six meter high waves along that east coast but on the west coast inflow very well could be kicking up the seas as well and even off towards Taiwan and the southern Japanese islands at this time rip currents are going to be especially dangerous I know a lot of people do want to probably get out there and try to catch some early autumn surfing I do not recommend it as typical with these storm systems with rip currents very well could be exceptionally deadly and dangerous. Now I did mention about showing the model consensus here and this is just from numerous models out across the western Pacific here at this time. Most of them global models pulling the storm system off towards the north northwest before starting to veer over the next 48 hours and turning towards the northeast. Now good news if it does push off towards the Okinawa actually out about the 48 to 60 hour mark it is expected to be a weak typhoon possibly by this time even possibly going extra tropical because it is going to start to interact with the upper level wind. I'll show you that jet stream in just a second once we get done talking about this, but this here in the black is the track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. They're still leaning a little bit towards the west, the model consensus, but all in all, I do think that they would start to slowly work their way back towards the east, but at this time still, across portions of Taiwan, you could be expecting some heavy rain showers, but definitely the southern Japanese islands very well could be seeing some very intense winds out of this. Now, I don't think it's going to be anywhere remotely close to the intensity uh, by this weekend going into early next week, as you saw with Sanba uh, just last week. Not even remotely close as those winds, but very well it will be making people take the proper precautions to get ready for the storm system. Now good news, as always, Okinawa is just a battle hardened place. And despite the fact that the islands here do get hit by numerous typhoons, you very rarely hear of any deaths coming out of here in recent times at least. Very rarely uh, do you see very significant damage as well. Now this is a track from the Japan Meteorological Agency. They move it towards the northwest, just east of Luzon Strait. And then kind of stall it out actually here, uh, just southeast of Taiwan. Basically, they're going to have the storm linger here until they're fairly confident on when that jet stream and that trophy is going to come by and pick it up and push it off there towards the northeast. So, at least according to this, across the southeastern portions of Taiwan, the extreme southwestern portions of uh, the southwestern Japanese islands, heavy rain showers are going to be seen. Very well could cause some significant flooding here, but also those rough waves of shipping traffic across this entire area very well is going to be disrupted. But also, so one thing I'm kind of interested in are these little tiny islands you see over here just uh, towards the east of Taiwan, uh, just north of the southwestern Japanese islands. These ones right in here, these are the Senkaku Islands at very high political debate at this time. This storm system does push off in towards this direction. It just sits there 
Now that's definitely going to be affecting a lot of things going on out across much of that area at this time. But that is a different topic for the news, but just one thing that very well could be affecting in here in the coming days. But that is all really on Gelawat at this time. Uh, definitely continue to check back in here for more recent updates as we continue to watch the storm system through the coming days. But also let's take a look at severe tropical storm Eleanor, and it's moving off there towards the north, expecting to turn just towards the northeast. Uh, as you can see here on the satellite imagery because of this frontal area right through there and that is going to cause this storm system to hopefully may remain just south of mainland Japan still some outflow from it could very bring some showers to Tokyo by the end of the week but one thing for certain though is across Iwoto and the Osagara Islands you're going to be seeing some heavy rainfall from this as well as it slowly tracks off there towards the north right now it's really getting battered by vertical wind shear though center of circulation is actually just here on the left side of those big bright white cloud tops and as that continues to push off there towards the northeast, it very well could start to decrease vertical wind shear, so might overall get some better circulation going around it. It could intensify to a very weak typhoon, although at this time it doesn't seem like it is extremely likely, but still could happen. Let's take a look at the official track here from the Japan Meteorological Agency on our tropical storm here. And really due to the interaction of that stationary boundary right here just south of Honshu, storm is going to track off there towards the north, kind of get pulled towards the left, and then once it falls into that trough and the upper level wind, it's going to pull off there towards the northeast. Now, I just wanted to type, keep on saying, and I was going to show you the upper level wind chart. Well, here is a look at the 500 millibar analysis, and this is really the wall that I'm talking about that these tropical systems are not going to get north. You see here all these stronger wind barbs upwards about 50 to 70 knots. That is that jet stream pulling through here, and that's actually expected to start to slowly drift towards the south should be around central China and then pull back off there towards the northeast into the coming days. And that very well could pick this storm system up by the weekend going into next week. It just really depends on how far that wants to drift towards the south. And that's really what everybody's watching on if this is going to linger here or very well pull off there towards the northeast. So definitely going to continue to keep you updated on both of these tropical systems, not just the one uh, Jellawat, but also the one over here. And also the other weather going on across the western Pacific, still in the tropics, continuing to see flooding across portions of Taiwan, Cambodia, and Vietnam. And meanwhile, uh, portions of Korea are still recovering from the consecutive typhoons that hit that area. And there's like some rain showers going to be pushing off towards your way as well. But that is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at westernpacificweather.com. If you any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment box below. Also, really appreciate it if you take any photos or videos. You haven't seen, I haven't posted really much uh, video or photo coverage in these updates. Really do appreciate any feedback if you do want to post them here. Post them on our Facebook page. On the website, you can also drop them there as well, or even just tweet them here, or you can email me here at robertspetta at westernpacificweather.com. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter at robertspetta and Western Pacific Weather. Please stay safe out there, though, everybody. Uh, always remember, do follow any evacuations or advisories you are being issued on from your local governments and definitely help you out in the long run here. All right, bye.